Oh, hi, I'm Jason and Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats. Oh! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spark star? All right. Spark star. <laughs> We're going to do just a review of a, a comic. I'm going to do one that came out this week because I'm still, once again, depressed about my divorce from DC, so it gave me time to look at other comics. And I found it, Image Comics. So have you read off Marvel yet? No. No, I'm waiting for Fear Itself to end, and then I'm going to read it. Because I don't want to jump in midway through. I have the entire pain on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. I, just, I am going to give Fear Itself a shot. Ben. And you're going to tell us how you're going to do it. Yeah, I might. Yeah, she might be my new woman. So is, is Wolverine going to be your new Batman? Because <laughs> I feel as though there's a comparable. Or would Spider-Man be? No. You think Wolverine? Yeah. Well, let's, let's put it this way. Could you see Spider-Man and Batman teeing off in an even battle? Or could you see Wolverine and Batman teeing off in an even battle? Batman, Spider-Man, because Wolverine is like indestructible. But Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Given enough time, he could beat them. So. All right. So I've been able to look out in the big world of comic books and... I picked up an image comic, well I really didn't pick it up, but we'll just say I picked it up. It's called Severed. Issue number one came out on Wednesday. And it takes place in 1912. About this kid. And it, they're going with the old horror movie feel to it, where it slowly starts building up. The beginning of the comic starts off where an older guy with one arm Gets, uh, and during Elvis Presley time, so what, the 60s or whatnot? 50s, 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 I think. Yeah. And his grandson comes right up and is like, I got a letter for you. I got a letter for me from some guy. And the old man looks at it and reads it and, like, he freaks out. And then he has this flashback that goes back to 1912. And it's pretty interesting. And it has that old time feel because it's 1912. And like cars are just coming out, electricity, you know, General Electric's being mentioned. And it's basically a story about this guy's journey and what happens to him. But like kids are getting eaten by like this vampirish thing. Like he has teeth, but he comes out during the day. Keep doing your crazy review. I need another beer. All right. Oh, uh, that was through DC, well, Vertigo, American Vampire. Like no. Not that one. That was oh. the other one. That was about, like, the vampires were big. Oh, Turf. Yeah. No, it's nothing like that at all. Because I don't like that one. That was... Yeah, Turf was kind of, eh. This one's, uh, I want to see where it goes because I don't think he is a vampire, but, like, he has all these weird tattoos on him, and he just this kid. Like, he makes it, he comes all friends with the kid, like at orphanage, he picked up the kid, and he's like, oh, you're going to be working for GE now, and he gave some light bulbs to the orphanage, way. Like, all, this is all a spoiler alert, people, so. <laughs> and like, he's like, okay, kid, you're going to wire up this training house, you know, because we got to see how you do. Remember, positive, positive, negative, negative. So the kid goes downstairs, and this thing with teeth comes out there, and Chomp chomp. So I'm thinking the main character, the older guy now, who they show him in the past, who runs away from home to try to become a uh, violinist or some musical instrument thing with his father. That like the father note might be fake from the guy that beats the kid. So we're still on spoiler alert. Yeah, this is all a spoiler alert. And it was issue number one it came out on Wednesday, severed, uh, through image. I think it's going to be like a full run where it's not going to be like a four issue, six issue thing. I think it's just going to go through this guy's life. And I think this might be how he loses his arm. I'm not sure. It's, I don't know. I was intrigued by it. It had a good feel to it. The writing was really good. Art. Art was actually good for an image. Like, and there's like some popular artist that's the artist for it. There's like three good artists that work with it. Yeah. It's, and... They went to Image so they could keep their idea to, you know, creator-owned. 
and the back page of the guide gives a whole story about this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it. I, I'm hooked, I'll, I'll keep reading it. You know, it's a good alternative to DC, by DC. So, so I'll pick that one. yeah, yeah, it was good. Marky? I don't know how I'm going to follow that five minute spoiler alert. Yeah, I gave that whole comic up. But yeah, that was an issue one, so it's probably like 10 pages. Uh, you never graded it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to grade it uh, eight and a half. Eight and a half? Yeah. Is eight and a half an A or a B? Uh, I'll say A minus. Okay. B plus A minus, somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah, so, the cover's like all funky looking, like you see like this hand that's like off and it's old. And so here, here's the deal, I got a list of comics I'm just going to review. And we're going to start with DC, so I can get through them fast and then move on to the good comics. <laughs> Alright, so we got some random doomsday. Where, how do we get this going, man? Come on. Alright, so I believe this is the most current issue. Um, uh, Action Comics 903, which I guess... We don't care about ever reaching the thousand. It's going to issue one. Um, I give it an eight. I, that's all I'm gonna say. An eight. An eight. Oh, an eight. So an what? F. And a B minus. Oh, B minus. <laughs> we got all these new grading scales. All right. So Justice Society of America. Again, we're we're apparently gonna cancel yeah. this book. This is what hurts me the most, is seeing this going bye bye. We're going to cancel that book, and apparently there was no Golden Age. Because yeah. we're not going to have Golden Age characters, except for the only one that doesn't have power. So that was like the tight ass, of, you know. So, um, and that's issue 52. I give that one a 9.5, which is a 8 plus, technically. And it's gone. Ooh. And it's gone. So that's all I'm going to say for DC. Um, you should pick up Justice Society starting at whatever arc it was with that weird villain. Yeah. That basically, 2010. About a year ago, yeah. Start. Um, that book is amazing. I'm sure it's going to be released in graphic novel. Um, I have with me a dynamite book that I did promise to review. We have Kirby Genesis. Um, Kirby Genesis is just a very, very interesting read. As of right now, I do not 100% understand what's going on in the book, um, but it holds your interest anyhow. The art is pretty. There's some Alex Ross influence. The covers are Alex Ross. The interiors are partial Alex Ross and another artist. Um, the story basically is we sent out a probe into space with artist renditions of what humanity is or could be. And Kirby was the artist that sent they chose. Oh. So this pro bumped into some kind of super alien space entity. It's all gonna be an issue zero, spoiler alert. Spoiler. Um and he got the idea that we were super beings. I believe the creature, this is not proven yet in the story, the creature created super beings to send to Earth to contact us. Um, caused a whole bunch of weird things to happen on Earth. There's like past creatures beyond like dinosaurs. They're more intelligent than us, all kinds of weird super beings. Cool. It's a good read. It's only at issue two. You can still pick it up pretty easily. Um, most comic book stores have even issue zero if it's a big store. Uh, otherwise, you can probably get it off of Amazon or eBay at this point uh, for issue zero. Uh, I would say you don't need to read, read issue zero in this one, but like I said, this is a solid read. This is an A book. Uh, I have with me some Marvel because Marvel is now much, much the top dog. Woo, Marvel! And we have their top current book, Fear Itself. I believe that's three. And we have four. You know, Marvel's like the and ex, the ex girlfriend you go to after the divorce. You know, for like the cool thing is they're sporting around Captain America, who is arguably either the coolest or lamest character they have. <laughs> you can pick. He is not like 
He's not like the seven or the really awesome sidekick. He's either the best or the worst character they have. But basically, Fear Itself is a crossover. Um, it's probably the best crossover I've read in a cur uh, few years. Marvel has really been beating the shit out of, out of DC of crossovers. But it's hard time to the shit out of them themselves, and hopefully it continues. Go Marvel, go! I, I would say that it's comparable to Blackest Night, which is, in my mind, the only successful DC crossover in about five years. Yeah, um, Brightest Day, I'm going to have to say so. And it was a waste because it was a waste because it did away with everything Black as Night did. And because of like everything's a waste now. Uh, with Fear itself, it takes place after I Siege, which was another strong one that I would compare on equal grounds with Black as Night. Um, it's cleaning up Siege's mess, but it's its own book in the fact that it's bringing in a new story arc that is very strongly affecting the Marvel Universe. Um, basically, you have gods created out of Marvel characters, oh. such as uh, Hulk, Thing. kind of scary to see them holding what appears to be an Asgardian weapon. Uh, at this point, I currently don't know exactly what is fully going on in it, um, I don't know if they're truly Asgardian weapons or if there's another race of gods that are against the Asgardians, you know, uh, such as Thor, who is from Asgard. Um, you have Odin, everybody, all the big powerful characters seem to be a player in this book, as well as a lot of the minor characters, and you kind of get to see how the, the effects of the big characters, you know, such as like Thor would affect a smaller character such as like Black Widow. Which is cool that they entail everything into one in a very soap opera kind of way. They're kind of, kind of weird for a comic book, but no, that's what comic books are. They're soap, soap operas for guys, really, um, or Some women. Um, just the primary readers are, you know, men. Yeah. Um, but there's the, the women, too. And this book, I think, will catch everybody's interest. You have a lot of classic characters, you have a lot of modern characters, and you have a whole new take on things. Uh, I believe Fear Itself is probably nine and a half or a ten, somewhere in there. It's a very, very strong crossover, and uh, if you look at its sales, you can oh, really yeah. see that it, how strong it is. It's catching new readers as well as old readers. Um, that's why Marvel's the top dog right now, and how they managed to surpass the 75-year mark of DC and just make DC look like Image. Which, I'm not coming down on Image, but they're, in comic book world, they're young. Yeah, yeah, I remember when they first came out. I mean, I, I'm 25 years old, and I remember Image coming out. So, as far as that goes, that's impressive that Marvel is able to overtake DC. And a lot of it has to do with the story writing of such crossovers of Fear Itself, Siege, which the end of Siege was a little weak, but Fear Itself seems to have picked it up and uh, taken over and fixed the problems that Siege had in the book. Alright, so are we done? I'm done. Okay, comic book owners, tear off issue number ones of uh, Flashpoint, send in 50, and you get the alternate cover for Fear Itself number six or no, number seven. Number seven. So do that. Fuck with Flashpoint. Fuck with DC. Go comic book uh, store owners. See you guys. Be back next week.